Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu. In this video, I'll show you how I've replicated this ancient Greek mask made out of plaster into this fiberglass model. So I'll be using a silicon mold with a fiberglass shell around it to give it some strength. And then you'll see how flexible and how thin the silicon is and how the reinforcement will help to keep its shape on um, the silicon. So if you might have seen my other video, you might think, Mathieu, why don't you just make a mold out of the uh, uni, uni tooling resins like you did with the Iron Man mask. So like you can see like the, the mold here. Well, the reason is that the mold or the parts that had to be made from this has a lot of undercuts and some sharp edges like the curve and the hair uh, would cause some problems if you just make a hard mold out of this model so you might also think so why don't you just make a big silicon mold like you did with the YouTube button well uh, the shape of this mask would cause um, having to use a lot of silicon for this and silicon can be quite expensive so everything that is made of out of half spheres and spheres will use a lot of resin so another thinking you might have is why do you want to replicate this mask because sometimes you buy one and you want a second one or you just want to have a lighter piece so the first piece was one and a half, one and a half kilo the piece that I made was only 200 grams so to start this tutorial with the customer so these were artists music artists from Belgium they wanted the mask based on this model but they wanted to have some changes so I've removed a bit of uh, the top of the head so the like the little icons that you had on the front of the head had to be removed so this can be done by removing some material so I've just sanded it away so it's very easy to sand uh, plaster of Paris so the the plaster another way you can do is add some material so I'll be showing you here so these markings so these ornaments had to be removed as well and here we'll be using some bondo just to flatten this part out in another way so you can remove or you can add material to create the shape that you want so first I've masked everything that I didn't want to have bondo on and then I'll be adding it on so I'm not a professional in using bondo but it's just using a bit of material and then you add like a bit of hardener. The amount that you'll add will also have an influence on how fast it will cure. So you want to cure to have it cure quite rapidly so you can continue with the project as fast as you can, but you don't want it to go too fast still to be able to apply everything before it hardens. So basically it's just sanding it flat again. So now the shape of the head is the way that they wanted it so the customer wanted it like that and then I've just removed a bit of like um, nips and so on that you still had on the mark on the mask before adding some spray paint so I've just used a spray putty out of the can so the mask was quite smooth uh, to start with and then you just apply a couple of layers waiting 15 minutes in between and that way you'll have like a scratch free uh, finish at the end and then you can proceed by, add by adding the varnish or in my case I've just added some spray paint like uh, a colored spray paint so the color doesn't matter uh, you just want to have it flat and in the shape that you want so this could be any object this could be a 3d print as well I'll be talking a bit more about 3d printing and finishing them in future videos so if you don't want to miss that make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel so to continue, we'll just close some parts of the mask because we'll be using silicon, so we'll pour the silicon on top. So we have a base and then I've just used some filleting wax just to go around the mask to avoid having too many undercuts. So parts where the silicon might get trapped, like for example the mouth as well. So I've closed that mouth with some uh, filleting wax and now it's time to pour the first layer of silicon so for this part I've decided to go with the AS40 additional cure so this is a bit of a tougher silicon the advantage is that it's uh, translucent easy composites has another one so it's the CS so condensation cure uh, the big difference between these two silicons is that one will cure faster under heat the other one it won't make a difference so this one would cure faster under heat 
um, and that's an advantage. So you add 10% of catalyst and then it will harden in about, I would say 10 hours should be a safe zone uh, to the mold. So for this, I didn't mix too much to start with and I just did a pour and let gravity do its thing. So I'm just like covering all the deta details in the first layer and then we'll build up some more silicon by using uh, a thickened silicon. So you can do this with the same silicon and adding some um, like more texotropic features to the silicon by adding some uh, additive, additive, um, an additive solution to make it more like texture and less runny. So it is on its own is a thick silicon, but as you can see in the first uh, layer that I poured, it will flow off of the mask. So I added some texotropic uh, additive. You don't need to use a lot. So they advise between 0.5 and 3% and it will change the texture in a more texotropic. So it's a thicker uh, liquid to add on top. So I mix it with a drill and here we can see like the difference in runniness or texotropic uh, features of the silicon has changed. So it's more like uh, cake glazing or cake batter now or like a thick chocolate so you have to move it around over the mask the advantage is now that you can add thicker thicker layers um, i've added some red to the silicon so this is a special additive just to make sure that you see the difference where you've already been and where it's still too thin so you can see on the chin i add a bit of a draft to make sure that the shell that will be coming on top is easy to remove so no undercut and then i'm adding some like positioning pins or markings so i'm sure that i can position this silicon sleeve into the shell later on before making the masks so once everything is cured you can remove like the flange so everything was left till this stage and that way we'll have a nice and crisp edge uh, around the silicon sleeve so the next step would be to make the shell so i'll be using some polyester resin i make sure that my mold flange is clean in a way so I work in a clean in a clean way um, here I'm just using the general purpose laminating resin so it's an easy and cheap resin to use so you just use some resin you add some MACP hardener so the amount of MACP will make a difference in how fast it will cure so you'll have to find like the sweet spot between having enough time to work with your resin and having it to cure like fast enough so for me in most cases if you're in an ambient temperature temperature of around 20 degrees celsius about one and a half two percent is good for me for shapes like this so i just apply a first layer um, onto the silicon so you don't need to release agents because silicon will self-release from any material except for its own material so if you pour silicon on top of silicon it will adhere to it, each other uh, fiberglass and polyester want on the silicon so I add some chops around fiber, um, fiberglass so it's very easy to add you'll see that the binder and the chopped fibers will loosen over time with the polyester resin being added and then you just make sure that you get everything as tight as possible against the part so here's a part that is not necessary but i was trying this process for the first time so i've decided to try it just to add some vacuum to compress the fiberglass nicely against the silicon so after making this tutorial so this is not necessary so you don't need these tools to make a project like this so it's a basic entry project because you can just add the silicon and then you add the fiberglass and you should be done so here we can see the vacuum bag being added and then like making sure that I have the bag in the right position and then I just pull full vacuum and wait for it to cure so here you can see the removal of the part so make sure to wear some gloves um, the edges can be quite sharp so it's like needles um, and here we can see like the removal of the silicon sleeve and then we'll remove the original part so the plaster piece can now be removed so it's good that we're able to remove the silicon with the parts out of the shell because it means we have no undercut undercut later on for the parts and here I'm just checking if everything is right with the silicon because only at this stage I know that the silicon was rightly applied in a good way so um, we're able to proceed with the next of um, 
this project. So I remove the flange. Uh, you don't want to cut yourself on the edges while using this mold. I just use some rough sanding paper, so it's 80 grit, to remove the sharp edges on the shell as well. And then good practice, it's something I always do while making silicon molds, is just to give it a quick rub with some hot soapy water. Just to make sure that if I have some uncured silicon or unmixed silicon, it should all be removed by now and don't cause more problems while making the parts later on. So make sure your silicon is dry because polyester resins um, aren't good friends with water, uh, epoxy resins as well. And here a quick like uh, a change between the laminating resin that we've used is that we'll just use some gel coat. So it's a, a colored polyester resin that is a bit thickened so you're able to apply it on sharper edges as well and this will make like the first layer of the mask so in this case it's black if you want another color you can color it in another way um, and then it's just a matter of mixing it again with some McP harner and just applying it onto the mask so that way you're sure you won't have bubbles um, onto your parts and you can still finish it later on uh, with some paint if you want so the second, so while this first layer is still in a tacky but cured stage, you can add the general purpose laminating resin again with some fiberglass. So the only difference is that I've used a thinner fiberglass. So this is only 100 grams just to be able to apply it in the more like detailed corners. So after doing this, you're able to remove the mask and then you're close to finished. So the mask is removed, so you have a nice glossy finish. The finish will be the same as you had on your original mask, so it's maybe a good idea to finish your mask in a nice and glossy way um, from the start so you get good demoldings time after time. So I've just removed uh, the flange that I still had, cut it to shape, and then you can just like unsharp or cut the edges with some sanding paper just to make sure you don't cut yourself on the mask and then you you can just like clean the mask to remove any dust you have like i want to show is uh, the mask was into a silicon sleeve so if you want to paint this mask later on you'll have to sand it because the residue of the silicon might might cause some problems with the paint coming on later on so here's the finished part. So now we're able to make about 50 parts in a lighter way. So this was for a Belgian band. Unfortunately, it wasn't used uh, till now due to the pandemic we have. Um, but this is the finish and I just wanted to show how you can replicate parts with some more detailed um, features onto, the, onto masks or parts that you want to cost. So I hope you like this video. Make sure to subscribe and see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.